Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty, a Haggerty 10. As you know, Twitter handle, you all know that all by heart by now. And I'm joined once again by Sean Martin at Sean Martin TCW oh. Twitter handle. Good morning, Sean. Morning, Tony. How are we doing? You, you stopped okay. off and split on I'll the day. I'll take the water beside me this time, yes. So I'll uh, try not be as raspy as yesterday. For those of you who were on yesterday, you'll know what I'm referring to. The old talk yeah. was giving it a bit of, a bit of grief, fun. but there we go. Anyway, first things first, look at the strap line along the bottom, as we always tell you to do, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to the Celtic Way, support top quality journalism covering the club you love, and it's just a pound a month for full access. You know what to do, hit that button, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe, a bargain if ever there was one, Sean. Certainly is, Tony, I certainly is, just a, just a single golden nugget. A golden nugget, indeed. A county down, as they used to say, you know. Slang, <laughs> county down. There you go. Morning, boys. Morning, John. How are we doing? Right, guys. Celtic never sleeps, it never stops. Morning, Helen. How are you doing? Uh, and Sean, overnight, Le Keep gave yep. us some information about a £7 million defender, Christopher Julian, who looks like he's heading to Montpellier to do a deal. It failed with Schalke, who won't say mm-hmm. too much, but it looks as if it. Christopher Julian could be finally saying au revoir and heading out the door. John, it makes sense, I think, for both parties that particular deal to go through, doesn't it? That's exactly that's exactly my, my view on it. I I mean we spoke about him earlier in the summer a couple of times back in June. It was it feels as if it was wasn't it that yeah. long ago, but it was in June, uh, the Schalke stuff. Um and initially my take was obviously don't don't let him go until Carter Vickers has been signed, remember? So, yes. Obviously, even then, after Carter Vickers had signed, I was still left a wee bit weary in terms of depth. Even though Chris Julian was a non-factor last season, I thought yep. maybe having him about, even though he was on big wages, was allowed, would allow Stephen Welsh to maybe go and get first team minutes elsewhere if possible. That's obviously not going to happen. I think it's interesting. Welsh and just made it clear that he wants him as part of his first team squad. He started that first game of the season, scored, obviously, and then, and then took ill. So... He kind of has slipped back down that pecking order in, in a way, which is really bad luck timing wise. Um, so in terms of depth, the signing of Maurice Jens has provided what you want really to allow Julian to sort something. Eh? I mean, it's a fair and ideal time for, as you say, both parties. I, I think if he does move on now, um, we've got to think in, in terms of who's already there. Carter Vickers is undisputed first choice right centre back. Yes. Already. I don't think anybody's yes. going to argue otherwise. Um, so unless he gets injured, you've essentially got three players fighting to be his partner, not including Julian or any of the youngsters that might that might mm-hmm. knock on the door in first team training when they get a chance. So I I think it's an ideal time for Julian and for the club to get something over the line. I mean, he gave Celtic some big moments and he really has been beset by bad luck ever yep. since he got that injury, Sean. But you know the goal against Lazio, the winner against Rangers in the League Cup final. I think he goes with most Celtic supporters' blessings and just really unfortunate that he never, ever really recovered his Celtic career after the... Well, there you go. Good luck to Big CJ. He gave us a great Christmas 2019 with that cup final winner. But it was... Uh, I mean, you heard it at the time. His knee collided off the post with a shoulder yeah. and a bang. Mm-hmm. And it looked awful and it turned out to be awful for him. And Just some players find it hard after that to kind of re- rediscover for him and even get back into the team. And that's what's happened to Christopher Julian. Just bad luck has befallen him, Sean. Yep, and as Jason Lee says here, professional football is a cruel business at times. Um, it, it really is. It all goes, you can trace it all the way back to that injury. I agree with you. Um, if I'm right in saying, was it Dundee United? Dundee United, yeah, and he was um, trying to keep the ball out of the net. I, wasn't they were already, Celtic were already a couple of goals up, weren't they? So yeah. he probably looks at it and goes, well, if only. Um, yeah. You never know. I mean, there's a couple of comments suggesting maybe he's a clash of personalities with Ange Postacoglu as well. That's an unknowable just now. I know that you yourself, your take was, when you wrote a newsletter about it uh, at the end of June, was kind of you felt that the seeds of his departure were maybe sown by his kind of what his outward attitude seemed to suggest yes. at the title celebrations. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean a clash of personalities, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Ange Postacoglu said multiple times himself that he doesn't, doesn't like to ostracise people that when they want to go, they can go, but unless they tell them actively, I don't want to be here, they're quite happy to be in the group, that kind of thing. So without 
without knowing one way or the other, I wouldn't like to uh, hypothesise about a clash of personalities. Yeah. But I take your point from earlier in the summer as well about the the, the outward kind of yeah. emotion or lack of emotion that it was shown. And I also feel that the point you made there is very pertinent, and we spoke about it yesterday as well. Celtic really do now have four centre backs, mm-hmm. and it's Perman two from four, of which we feel Cameron Carter Vickers is a certain starter. So you're perming anyone from three with Gents, Starfelt, and Welsh to play alongside uh, Cameron Carter Vickers. But also you you're in a good situation there because Jens is gonna hit the ground running. Starfelt's tried yeah. and tested beside Star uh, Cameron Carter Vickers, and Welsh has upped his levels in his game under Ange this season already. Unlucky with being ill. So they're in yeah. a good position there, Sean. You know, Celtic are in a good place in terms of central defenders. I, I mean, I can't find the comment, but someone had, someone had asked about um, the Yent situation because obviously he's a lone player, but as far as they announced, there is a, an option to buy. Yeah, so to it's buy almost, a, as I said in the newsletter, it's suck it and see. You see if he yeah. can cope being a Celtic centre-back. And if he can, great. You sign him at the end of the season, mm-hmm. same as you did with Carter Vickers. And obviously further up the field, same as what you did with, with Jota last year. Um, it can work. You've seen it. Of course, and, and as I say, that there's kind of well stock, so it suits everybody, and I think it suits Celtic to part company with Joe N and say thanks very much. Mm. I enjoyed that. Just sad the way it kind of ended for you, but you know, the, the Celtic supporters will always have the 2019 League Cup final in, in Lazio, won't they? At home? Yep, certainly will. I um, it, it was a, a I know a, pe- a lot of people will bring up Landon Dykes in particular. But it was generally, apart from games against London Dykes, it was generally like a solid presence in both boxes as well. Um, none more so than that 2019 League Cup final. So there's a, a few comments, Tony. Um, yeah, see that? Stuck his laptop, Julian is running his yeah. race. See, yeah. that, I mean, that's that we, we invite opinion on here, Sean. We invite comments, so uh, we're not all here to agree. And yeah, I mean, there'll be a, a school of thought with a lot of Celtic supporters that, that think like that, and, that, and that's fair enough. Mm-hmm. I think it's good uh, comment. Patrick McLaughlin, a good good point. Uh, yeah, about the homegrown rule for Welsh. Yes, that's that's a great point, and something I've kind of pointed out a, a few times with potential transfers and stuff that people take yeah. that into consideration. Um, but earlier in the summer, kind of wasn't sure what way it was going to go with Welsh mm-hmm. and the the kind of balance of maybe trying to get him first team game time by that necessity where he's a homegrown player and you might need him. Uh, so yeah, fair point. Um, I like Kaiser's tongue and cheek comment here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? I just had I had it there a second ago and then it's just Why is Julian get a <laughs> <that> one? Uh, <laughs> Indeed, yeah. You know, <clears throat> ins and outs, Sean. I think uh, the way it's looking up and shaping up is that Julian will leave the club. Haksabanovic <clears throat> almost certainly to come in at the club this week. Looks like it, aye. Um, that would be the ideal scenario, as I say, yeah, as I said yesterday. Yeah. As post to is not in the habit <laughs> of um addressing these things in such a forthright manner if he doesn't think yeah. it's going to happen. So I think the Haksabanovich one, unless there's an almighty collapse, it looks as if, just based on Andrew's comments and the, the reports, that he's fine. Uh, yeah, apart from that, there's um, a comment here from SK, Tony. Do you think Celtic will be looking for a decent fee or more just to free up the wages? I think the latter mostly. Um, but you've got to remember that Schalke deal it was obviously it was going to be on loan with an option to buy. So they were going to, uh, if I correct me if I'm wrong, Celtic were going to extend his contract at the last minute so that it was a fee that would carry. <coughs> um, so it might be something similar again unless it's a, a, an actual purchase. So Sorry, Sean. Just having a wee choking fit. Right. In there. It's not, not good being on a live broadcast. I'm sorry, Trips. Yeah, you, even sipping water, but there you have it. Yeah, indeed. No, yeah. Listen, it's uh, with a what is it now? A few days left in the transfer window, so I think Celtic want to get all that kind of business done with getting the guys out the door, like a Jetty and Julian, <coughs> those that are deemed surplus to requirements, and and possibly bring in another couple because even if they do sign Haksabanovic, there is talk that Celtic aren't done, and there might be another one coming in, Sean. Yep. Uh, Kaiser makes a great point. Julian's wages was always going to be the sticking point. You can't really have someone on his reported mm-hmm. wages not getting a game again for another year, that kind of thing. I think that's that's only rational. Uh, plenty of comments on your cough, Tony. Uh, yes, indeed. Keep me that test kit. <laughs> <laughs> it's right behind me, actually. Um, 
They'll all be dividing up that wardrobe, obviously. They'll be wanting a door each. Oh, yeah. That's super striker, I'd be. I'd be. Patrick McGoughton were an interesting, an interesting one, Tony. Would Celtic rip up a Yeti's contract if there's no mm. interest? I don't, I don't think so. It's far too early to do that, I would I would say. Um, 2024, he's contracted to. I don't know if the player might be, uh, would maybe consider something like that in order to go and get himself play, game time. Potentially, <laughs> but, but with two years reluctant. left in your deal, they might think there's any sort reluctant. of fee. Then. Yeah, a lot of them are reluctant to walk away from money, aren't they? But if mm. they're not playing and, they're not, and their reputation is suffering because of it, Mm-hmm. Majetti's reputation is suffering every week that he doesn't play and with no interest. So you know, there comes a point we have to do something, mm-hmm. or you just, or, or else you just take that easy option and uh, sit in the stands and take your money. I, I, I think I might be simplifying it as well. Though I think, I mean, Gary McDowell says Ayeti is an asset, and t- strictly speaking, he is still an asset. He's under contract. He's still at a decent age. It's not worth it for him at Celtic, but someone somewhere will look at him and go, yeah, yeah. He, here, we can get a, we can get a tune out of him. So I, I don't think there's, there would be any thought of ripping up his contract anytime soon. Um, that said, yeah. there's plenty of comments coming in saying he will be on decent wages, and that will be true, he will be on decent wages, and, and kind of yeah. the same rationale applied to, to Julian, where you, you need to balance it at some point, where if you're never going to play, then you are just losing that money um, and you're also decreasing in value, I suppose. But there will be someone somewhere will look at Albin Ayeti and think he, he would suit us, he would do a he would do a turn in our league, he would do a turn for our team, that kind of thing. And it's just a case of when it happens. Now, talking about players, lovely segue there, Sean, into what the next topic we're going to talk about is loan players and yeah. doing a turn. And you picked out two in particular that, who are doing who are doing pretty well at the minute. Um, One of them on scales yeah. at Aberdeen and the others Adam Montgomery at St Johnston. Well, I, I mean, I've got players. the kind of the gist of the rest of them as well. Like, I feel I said I would do it. I've not done it in the last couple of weeks, but I said I would I would do an occasional wee loan update and stuff. So I thought this might be a, a decent day to do it. But we'll come to Liam Scales and Adam Montgomery because I think they're the two main ones people will be kind of concerned about. Obviously, a big bit of news in, at the weekend was Johnny Kenny Tony going on loan to yes, Kings Park. Own Coyle, I listened to his interview. Um, Owen Coyle spoke really positively about how he wants to use him so that's definitely one to keep an eye on he made his debut but it was only a couple of minutes uh, yeah. elsewhere there seems to be a, a kind of lopsided interest in Connor Hazard I notice whenever there's a, a new story goes up on him uh, he's starting every game for HJ, HJK Helsinki and as far as I understand they're going to be playing European group stage football so it's going well for him as well uh, there's other people out on loan Ben Wiley's not really got a lot of starts for Airdrie yet Ismail Asoro was obviously out in Portugal playing with Aruka. He's uh, started the past two games. Osazi Uragidi back at Ostende. Played all, played in four games since returning. All at centre-back. One, two, lost two. Um, but yeah, Liam Scales and, and Adam Montgomery, I think, are the two that I would I would kind of... I'm definitely going to be making a, a concerted effort to keep an eye on as the season unfolds. Jason Lee saying Scales is looking really good. He's certainly coming with a lot of plaudits from up in Aberdeen because I've yeah. still got pals up there. They, they talk highly of him. He's been playing left centre back um, a lot. His versatility is meant that he has played left back occasionally, but they've looked better with Scales at left centre back. That That's come through without a doubt. Um, he's kind of, I read a news article up the other day just kind of updating on it, and he'd contributed five clean sheets, Tony, in yeah. his seven games. And interestingly, when he's moved to left back, Aberdeen seem to have conceded more because they've only conceded once when Scales has been at centre back. Yeah, so I think you can kind of see, plus reinforced by Jim Goodwin's comments on him, he seems to love him. Um, so it's, got, it's going really well for Liam Scales, Tony. I don't I, whether you think that means he can come back down and actually press his case to play left centre back for Celtic, given everything we've just said. I don't know, but he's certainly doing all he can so far. Well, of course. They're going out and want to get valuable game time and to show the manager that they can do a job. And I think mm-hmm. Scales will certainly do that. You know, so there you go. I also, uh, as you say, uh, one player we didn't mention was Mikey Johnson. There's still talk bubbling around him. Yep. Mm-hmm. <coughs> About leaving Sean in this window and going to get game time elsewhere. But Scales and Montgomery are the pick of the two. So mm-hmm. of the lone players, as you say, keep a close eye on Johnny Kenny at Queen's Park. Yep. I mean, Adam Montgomery, there was a weird one at the weekend because I keep an eye on these things um, yeah. when I can. And he'd been playing a lot. He'd been in, like, he'd been starting most games for St Johnston, mm-hmm. whether it left back, left wing back, that kind of thing, even further forward once. 
Um, but he wasn't in the squad at all for Saturday's game against yes. Aberdeen, and I was quite, I was quite intrigued. And I, I listened to Callum Davidson's post-match stuff on the, the St Johnston website. Never mentioned it. I can see it mentioned of it anywhere. But um, last night, the the courier up in uh, up in Perth, they reported that they had spoke to Callum Davidson, and, and it was a tight thigh, Tony. Um, okay. So it wasn't anything major. He was out of the squad for that, but he'll be back in the, the, the squad for the next game, which I believe is Hearts away. So no, not something to worry about necessarily. I just I found it found it odd that he wasn't in the squad, and, and that's the first update. Yourself and myself have spoken about uh, the benefits of going to a, a Scottish club because mm-hmm. you're playing against the same teams and playing against the terrain. So mm-hmm. when you do come back to your parent club, <coughs> you know the experience is there. You know what it's about. And we always use Ryan Christie as that example. Yep, as T1 just has their schedule we'll return a better player, just like Christie. Yep, um, I think he will. Whether he can come back and, and quite make the same impact, I don't know. But I remember at the time, as I said, I was in Aberdeen and, and they were they really wanted to keep Ryan Christie. Yeah. Um, and it was at the time of the Johnny Hayes kind of talk and stuff and there was talk, could, could, the, could there be some sort of deal done with both being involved? Yeah, yeah. Other things in Celtic said no, we do want to keep Ryan Christie, but we also want Johnny Hayes. <laughs> um, and uh, I, ju- I do think that it does. I say this to I think it was on with Allison, it does get overlooked sometimes. And and people didn't necessarily expect Christie, even though he'd done really well, to come back down and break into a team that had been so so good the season before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all right, it took him a couple of months to seriously break in, but he did, uh, and he was never really out again after that. Whether Scales can come back down and, and do something similar, I don't know. But he has that that quality of being a left footer and yeah. an, and a centre back, which Celtic still don't have. Even with Jens, um, yes. capable of using his left foot. Starfelt being kind of grown into that role. Welsh playing there and playing well when he when he does play there. None of them are left footed, so that could count for him if he does do that well across the whole season. Because there's no way that Aberdeen are going to get him permanently if he does that no, well. No chance. Absolutely no chance. As much as Jim Goodwin wants him, he wants him. Uh, he wants him. <laughs> he's never getting him. Now, Sean, yesterday we spoke to Matt Smith. Yep. Uh, for those of you who didn't see it, uh, we put it out on the YouTube channel. And, and I urge you to watch it. It's 20 minutes of gold. I think I got a couple of comments in there. Gary McDowell enjoyed the chat with Matt Smith yesterday. And makes me feel invincible. Yeah, I like that line myself, mm-hmm. Gary. It was, uh, that was the first thing he said when he was asked about Ange. <clears throat> Jason Lee, uh, Matt Smith interview was clear. And he came across as a, a really humble guy, Sean. Great guy. And yep. and really loved Ange Postacoglu, didn't he? Real kind of, you could... Uh, I, I think you can hear the, the respect in it, Tony. You can yeah. hear the respect. Uh, not played with him, not played under him, sorry, for about 12 years. Yeah. Uh, well, nine years, I think. Um but you can still hear it, and um, it wasn't just that. It wasn't just an Anne's love in Tony. I would, I would say, wouldn't it? No, it was. Oh, um, no. He gave us a real insight that, a real that insight um, into, yeah, what it's like to be a captain under him, what it was like when he left, which I, I found really yeah. interesting. Um, yeah, I think it was a, it was an interesting one. I would urge you all to to get on that. I've, I've put the link in the comments. Yeah, Sean's put a link in the comments, and then I've written a couple of pieces today that are on the. The yep. website on the back of that interview, if you want to go and have a read, a read at them. But yeah, I mean, it's just that, as Sean said, a valuable insight into the manager, a valuable insight into a player that's played under the manager and how what he expects you to do. And as you say, the, the bit where he talks about when he left, how his emotions and how he felt. But above yep. all else, he kind of speaks for most players and says that everybody who played under Ange Poster Cogley, he, he, and Steve McGarry said it as well when we spoke to him, he kind of changed their life, doesn't he? He's, he's yep. changed, changed his world, world. changed his football world, and yep. that's at this moment in time that man is a Celtic manager. And when you hear people talk like that, you really do. You, you feel a bit proud about that, don't you, Sean? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Andrew Galea saying Matt Smith's a good, honest footballer. Mm-hmm. He certainly came across in that twenty minutes as a good, honest guy, Tony. Um, a wonderful <laughs> person. A couple of comments. Uh, a wee bit tongue in cheek. Did you ask him about the Daleks, Tony? Matt Smith, the doctor, doctor, <laughs> obviously. Um, nah, funny, funny. Um, but I would be at Sons of Scotland. It was a fantastic insight video. Much appreciated comments, guys. And, and as I say, if any of you haven't watched it, it'll be there and it'll be there in perpetuity. So just whenever you can get get a wee watch. Yeah, we'd love, we'd love you to do that. It, we just like to kind of mix it up now and again and get people in who can give us some kind of valuable insight into yep. talking about Celtic, especially the manager, because everybody's interested. And, you know, yesterday was one of those days where 
Uh, you know, he start, started with a bang. As I say, it was 20 minutes a, a goal. We, we could have spoke to him forever, and I think he Aye. would have stayed, mm-hmm. stayed on forever, but he had to go and train with Brisbane yeah, City, didn't he? Yeah, um, Jason Lee, again, saying, really enjoy your interview episodes. Well, there, there will be more of them. Uh, we're going to make a concerted effort. It will not just be someone else on the briefing, that kind of thing. It will be, which is why we've kind of branded it as a Celtic way sit down, so that it's it's you can see it's going to be a, a, a kind of extended interview with someone or around a topic or, or whatever, rather than just them coming on and talking about Celtic for 20 minutes with us or 15 minutes with us in the morning. So I hope you do like them and, and there'll be more of them to come, definitely. That's that's two in the last few days. They'll not be quite as quite as rapid fire as that, but yeah. uh, but we'll, we'll be doing them consistently anyway. And as Sean said there, we will try and have a peg to hang it on. So as Sean says, it's not just someone coming on. We, we like to have a kind of topic and a theme of discussion, which kicks it off and is Sean Keenan saying a jumping off point, Sean, is that right? Is that yeah, you called? don't know where it'll take you, but that's, that's part of the fun, isn't it? Indeed, indeed. Now, Sean, we're building up to Big Thursday. Mm-hmm. Big job. Massive Thursday. <laughs> the Thursday. <laughs> who do we want? Guys, throw a couple of names in the comments. Of who, who do you want? You're Whenever Real Madrid mentioned you're you're wincing, you're like, oh no, <laughs> no, no, not at all. Just uh, I, I think Cal McGregor's mentioned Real Madrid a few times. Greg Taylor mentioned it as well. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. But I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind anybody to be honest, Tony. You're in pot four, so you're going to get a couple of really big, big of names. And, and um, you've seen with the likes of Barcelona and stuff, you never know what will happen. Oh, that's man, especially at Parkhead. I don't care who we get, Sean. I, I just I trust the manager to have a rip at it and have a go at them, and you know, just that, that's that's the way we want to play, and that's who we want. To, those are the teams that we want to play. So Gary McDowell, Tony saying we're well, <laughs> the draw, gents. Uh, all I'll say, Gary, is watch this space. Uh-huh. Watch, watch this, this space, space, Gary. Might have something Isn't that exciting, Sean. I would say it's exciting. Eh? I would say yeah. it's exciting. Okay, yeah. we'll try that. We'll go for that. Uh, we'll just, uh, tantalise them with that. Michael Ross, spot on. No such thing as an easy group, no. especially in the Champions League. That's, yeah, I'd agree with that. Well, I'll tell you something, Michael. I'll agree with that in the sense that I don't think a lot of people will relish playing Celtic. Nah, they won't. They won't. In front of that, in uh, front of a pack, pack head and the way Andy's got them set up to play, not a lot of people won't will, will relish coming to Celtic Park. So anyone mm. who thinks that Celtic are going to be an easy touch in this group, think again. Celtic will be up for it more than anybody who want to make a good representation of themselves. The manager wants to go in there and do well and succeed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the same, Scott. How there's just take anyone exactly, Scott. Bring on anybody. Doesn't really matter. You know, the, the chips fall where they do. I genuinely have confidence in the manager, confidence in this team, and I've got confidence in the supporters to make Parkhead rock. On those Champions League nights, Sean. Yeah, yeah, I think it's um, as I say, you, you never know what will happen at Parkhead, and I know it won't be a like I was at that Barcelona game, and Celtic barely had the ball, but it was still the atmosphere's arguably the best atmosphere I'll, I'll ever sample. I think, um, and that was partly because of the win, obviously. But you're not going to get that type of game. It's not going to be an attritional type thing from Celtic this year. So if they beat one of the big, one of the really big teams. What what a game it's probably going to be. And you can flag up the past European record and not win a European tie and, and last season European exploits. Emphasis on the last and past. Mm-hmm. We're moving forward, Sean. This is it. This is where Ange Postacoglu wants Celtic to be. This is <coughs> not so much where you start judging them, but that I think this is where he wants to be judged and he wants to have, have a crack at these teams. So I'm not yeah. interested in what's happening. <coughs> happened in the past and last year's European stuff. We go from now. Excuse me. Well you're right. Aye. Well I think when you look at the pots and Celtic's European history, certainly recent European history, Ajax are in pot one and Barcelona are in pot two. So you've got Ajax, Barcelona, Celtic again right away probably. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm I genuinely don't care who Celtic get. I'm I'm really just I'm just excited and looking forward to putting on what's against some of the best in yeah. European football once again and being at that top table and being able to show that we can compete and we deserve to be there. Yeah. No, I think most people would um, 
most people would would echo that. <laughs> Plenty of concern for you in the comments, Tony, just because of this cough. You've muted yourself because of the cough. And I, I think did I test the other day and I was negative, so I'm going to have another test and see how we go. But yeah, I may, I'm, I'm bearing up, as they say, Sean, bearing yeah. up. Must admit, right, this is a fair comment, Tony, about the fear factor of Parkhead. Maybe it's not so much a fear factor, but a, a, almost an enjoyment factor. I've been able to say that you experience Parkhead. Um, Daza there saying, don't buy the confidence because you've not won a, a home CL tie in, in, in years. Uh, he goes too far as to say soft touches. Would you agree with that, Tony? No, I don't. I don't no. agree with that. I, I agree that we've, we've been soft touches. Uh, but I, I don't think, I, I still think that people won't relish coming to Celtic Park. Mm. We're, we're records in the past. This is this is a new team. It's a new style of play. And it might be best suited to playing in Europe. We'll soon find out. But I, I think in the past we have been a team that can claim scalps. <clears throat> and I don't see any reason why we can't do it again, Sean. Mm. What I would say is that the, <laughs> the Brendan Rodgers team that obviously had a, were on onto a couple of hidings as well, but the, the most disappointing one from that was probably Anderlecht at home for me, because that is exactly the kind of team in a group stage that Celtic should be taking at home, that kind of thing. So I take I take your point, um, but I still do think that I, st- I still think that there's a there's a parkhead factor to consider for visiting teams. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt, but when it all come out in the wash on Thursday, Sean, we'll find yep. out who we get and we'll take our chance. I'm sure Andrew and the boys like ourselves are, are looking forward to it. Yep. Now, Definitely. before my voice packs in, Sean, I think we'll we'll call it a day, eh? Yep, that's it. <laughs> and as I say, we always say at the end, subscribe to the Celtic way. Hit the button, guys. You know the drill. It's a pound a month for full access. You can see the Matt Smith YouTube uh, podcast, which was excellent. You know what to do. Join us, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Thanks for all your comments. Always appreciate it. We, we love the community. I say it all the time, but we really do appreciate the community that we've built here and people coming on and talking civilly about the club. And we have good uh, good debate, good chat. Love it. Sean, always yeah. first class. Thanks for your contribution. Thanks for the contribution, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, guys.